this is a great time to build a PC. A lot of excellent sales right now, a lot of new parts coming out, prices have come way down from where they were, but how do you pick the right parts for your budget? How do you not overspend on particular things? We're gonna go through all of the details today and help you look at different PCs at different price points and how to make these decisions. And right now we're seeing a ton of great deals, Black Friday deals already launching before it even gets to Black Friday, that's how things work these days, including great deals like today's sponsor. This may be a sponsored segment, but I was going to buy one of these anyway, a wallet from Exter to replace my old wallet that was giving me lower back pain and was too bulky to fit in my front pocket. The wallets from Exter are minimalist and sleek, made of high quality materials with built-in RFID blocking protection uh, from wireless theft, and you can get a solar-powered tracking device the shape of a card that lets you track your wallet's location from a smartphone. You can use the two-way ringing feature and receive separation alerts, and two hours in the sun equals three months of charge. Also, competing wallets of this style do not offer the signature quick access card button, which fans your cards out for, well, easy access. I've already gotten compliments on this, and I'm going to be honest, guys, the reason I wanted one is I saw someone who had one, and they looked excellent, and then extra fortuitously reached out to me for this sponsorship deal, which is awesome. Now, we have a Black Friday sale right now for up to 35% off, so please take a look at the pinned comment and link in the description. Now, I'm not sponsored by PC Part Picker, but I think this is a great place to throw together a PC build. It searches a whole bunch of, of retailers. You can sort prices low to high. It doesn't search all of them, and it is only looking at new parts. So if you're willing to look for used parts, you can sometimes find better deals elsewhere and all of that. So I'm not saying this should be the only place you look, but it's going to be really useful to throw together the build. Now, when you're building a gaming PC, and I will be focusing on gaming here, although I might mention productivity from time to time, the most important components are the CPU and the, and the GPU, the video card. The video card will run the game as fast as it can, and usually you're limited by the video card unless the CPU just can't keep up. So you need to buy the fast, fast enough CPU, but I think some people overspend on CPUs, especially because we just had new generations of CPUs come out from both Intel and AMD. Now, if you are a competitive esports gamer where you turn down graphic settings to chase the highest frame rates, the CPU becomes more important. But I'm gonna assume we're doing more of a balanced gaming build that does some single player, some multiplayer, but you're not just exclusively trying to shoot for thousands of frames per second in CSGO or something. Anyway, um, so here's the thing. If you want to look at the new generations of CPUs, they're still quite expensive. The 7600X, I guess with no space in it, there we go, is the cheapest new AMD CPU. And it recently got actually a pretty big price cut. And I think there's a Black Friday promo code happening right now at Newegg, which is helping even more. Get this down to $240. Uh, if you go to the Intel side of things on their newer CPUs, you could look at something like the uh, 13600K, which is still over $300, although the motherboards can be cheaper, so the overall platform cost could be similar. However, here's the thing. Money you're spending on the CPU, the motherboard, and the RAM is money you can't spend on your GPU. And I'm going to be starting today's advice assuming that we're targeting a lower budget build. And on a lower budget build right now, a lot of times after new CPUs come out, the older ones get discounted. And guys, right now the Ryzen 5 5600 for less than $130 is going to be incredibly hard to beat in terms of like frames per dollar, especially because in a lot of gaming situations, you are GPU limited. So as long as the CPU is fast enough to keep up with your GPU, it actually do wouldn't help you at all to spend more money on a better CPU. Now we could get into the weeds with, okay, but 1% lows and then like the longevity of the platform. That's all true, but guys, it's $129. Now Intel's competitor from its previous generation to this is the 12400F. Uh, F just means it doesn't have the integrated uh, graphics into it. So you can't run an output to a monitor without um, without a dedicated graphics installed, whereas the non-F version costs more but has the built-in graphics. Um, it's a nice to have, but the point is, it's still over $170. So right now, I think the Ryzen 5 5600 for a budget build is an incredible deal. And we'll talk about 
you could spend more than this if you want to upgrade the system uh, from my, but I'm starting out at the lower budget price point. Also, the 5600 is going to come with a CPU cooler. It's not the best cooler, but it will make the CPU run as it should. Okay, also I'm not going with the X version because it's only a few percent faster for a lot more money. And like I said, when you're GPU limited, you won't notice the difference at all anyway. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just gonna mention you could buy a better CPU cooler and get lower temperatures and lower fan noise. But I think that's a nice to have and not a necessity. If we're targeting extreme budgets here, we're gonna um, save every penny we can. However, not every penny we can. If you select a CPU on PC Part Picker, you can then sort price low to high and see what's available, and it will sort it down to compatible motherboards, although some may need a BIOS update to be compatible. But this AM4 platform, the CPU you buy needs to be compatible with your motherboard. Uh, and the AM4 platform was around for a lot of generations of CPUs, so there's a lot of older motherboards that are pretty outdated compared to the newer ones. Not that you couldn't go with them to save some money, but the latest generation for this now, now older generation of CPU is the B550 and X570 boards. And there's some small differences between the two, but for most users, either one would be fine. If we narrow down to that and sort price low to high, you could definitely run the CPU on one of these cheap ASRock boards. They cut corners on a lot of things that might limit the upgradability of the CPU, the longevity, some features, all of that. So I could say you could definitely save some money here, but I think going up from $80 to about the $120 range opens up some much better quality motherboards that will also have things like built-in Wi-Fi if that matters to you. And I think the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi is a great, still pretty low budget affordable board. But like I said, you can run this CPU on even cheaper boards if you need to cut some more corners. I think this is a good um, middle ground for the budget range. So the other thing that, that uh, you, you need for the CPU and motherboard platform is the memory, the RAM. Newer CPUs are running on DDR5 now. Older CPU platforms aren't compatible with that. They're compatible with DDR4, which is still fine in most games, but there's different speeds available. But the thing is the prices on these are extremely low right now. Now, one choice you'll need to make is how much RAM to get. You should get at least 16 gigabytes. 32 gigabytes would be um, less likely to run into some issues, especially if you're multitasking a lot while playing games. But if you're just playing the game and don't have 100 Chrome tabs open at the same time, for the most part, you can still get by with 16 gigabytes and save a little bit of money. Make sure you get two RAM sticks, not one, because you want to run in dual channel mode. So I'm going to slot in two eight gigabyte sticks here, but please listen to me. And I'll, I know I'll get comments in the comment section. Guys, you can definitely get 32 gigabytes. Most games will be okay with 16 though. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, um, so definitely feel free to spend more here. Now you have to look at the speed and the cast latency. Both of those work together. Um, to uh, increase the speed of the RAM. Now, in gaming, when you're GPU limited, the RAM speeds don't actually matter all that much, but sometimes you can spend just a little bit more to get it faster, so you might as well. For example, 3200 cast latency of 22 is $35, but we could get down to a cast latency of 16 by going up to, uh, well, that's 2400, so never mind, but 3200 CL16 uh, going up to $41. Now, sometimes um, going up to 3,600 on the speeds isn't too much more money. So I'm gonna use this um, speed filter over here, go up to 3,600 and see how much we'd have to spend for that. So it looks like right now 3,600 CL18 is only $44. That's pretty cheap. If we want to get a faster timing going out down to like CL16, looks like we'd have to go up to $60. Now. If you are going to be CPU limited more frequently, like you're doing something like playing esports games a lot, spending a bit more on the faster RAM here could absolutely make sense. And you know what? It's not that much more money, so I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the 3600 CL16 memory. And again, you could you could go with the CL18, that would be fine, and you can go up to 32 gigabytes 
uh, if you'd feel more comfortable doing that, or if you're going to be doing any kind of productivity applications or multitasking while you're gaming. Those would all be reasons why you might want to go up to 32 gigabytes instead of 16. But like I said, I'm kind of starting out at a low budget, and we'll think about how you could bump it up from here. Now, things like storage will come back to. The case will come back to. The power supply will come back to. Right now, we've got a platform to plug our GPU into, and these are the things that affect the actual gaming performance. So the video card is the biggest deal. And um, right now, I do think that AMD GPUs at the lower budget range are offering a significantly better deal than NVIDIA. Let me show you what I mean. The cheapest um, RTX 3000 series card from NVIDIA is the RTX 3050, and it's currently priced at $270 for the absolutely cheapest models. Whereas the RX 6600 from AMD is available for less than $200 if you count a $20 uh, mail-in rebate. And if you don't count the, the $20 mail-in in rebate, it's still only about $210 for uh, for that model, and there's other ones in that price range. And an RX 6600 is significantly faster than an RTX 3050 unless you're using things like ray tracing or doing certain productivity workloads where uh, that favor NVIDIA and are programmed for NVIDIA. Now, when it comes to ray tracing, at this performance tier, the RTX 3050 isn't good enough at ray tracing for that be to, to be a feature you would be likely to use anyway. Also at low resolutions like 1080p, I don't think the upscaling advantages where DLSS is a little bit better than FSR, especially at lower resolutions, but I think you'd be more likely to want to run the game at the native 1080p resolution because at lower resolutions, the um, fuzziness of the upscaling when you're not running at native resolutions is more noticeable. So an RX 6600 is much more likely to just run your game at native 1080p and do it a lot faster than a 3050. So I think if, you, now the thing about your video card choice though, is this really depends on two things. What resolution are you targeting for your monitor and what frame rate are you wanting to run at? Because the, the higher resolution your monitor is, it gets extremely more difficult to run the games at higher frame rates and you'll have to buy a more expensive GPU. If you're targeting 1080p, 60 frames per second, with near maxed out settings, but turning some settings down to reach 60 FPS, the RX 6600 is a great choice, but you're definitely not gonna be ray tracing. Um, and the newest, most demanding games, you will have to turn down some settings. But that pr brings us in here with our CPU motherboard RAM, uh, the stock cooler, and a really solid gaming GPU for 1080p, we're coming in at $500. The rest of this, the storage, the case, and the power supply um, are not, uh, well, I'm just gonna say there's, there's a lot of possible choices you could go with here. Now, for power supply choices, um, there's different deals that you might find. So it's Black Friday week, you'll wanna look around. 80, the 80 plus ratings, like 80 plus gold and all that, um, aren't actually a quality rating, they're an efficiency rating, but C but power supplies that at least have that rating are less likely to be complete junk, although it's not a guarantee. So if you search for, for those to filter out complete junk and then sort prices low to high, then you also wanna look at the wattage and the brand name. Brand name doesn't tell you everything and looking up specific reviews of your power supply is a good idea. But if it's some kind of no name weird power supply, you might not trust it. Also modular just means whether or not the cables are detachable. Sometimes they're semi-modular, some cables detach, sometimes they're fully modular, sometimes they're not modular at all. That just helps for cable management and it's not a big deal for um, uh, you know, the actual performance of the system. Now, for power-wise, for the system we're, we just built here, it requires very little power at all. Even something like a 500-watt power supply would probably be fine. But if you buy a larger power supply, you're going to have enough headroom to where you could upgrade to a more power-hungry GPU in the future. 
So let's go ahead and see what a little more money gets us. I, Rosewell and Deep Cool aren't brand names that I'm going to feel really good about. I'm not a huge fan of Thermaltake either. Some of their power supplies are better than others. If we scroll down here, like EVGA has better reputation, but these aren't um, necessarily their highest end models. If we scroll down here a bit, starting to be some, some better options. So at this point, you can decide if you want to go with like a higher end one with lower power, or if you want to go with a um, higher power model that's maybe not quite as um, quite as good, you know, like quite as quality components, all of that. Now, there's nothing jumping out at me here as like the most ama amazing power supply in the world. And some of these are definitely overkill for the system that we're actually building here. Um, but a Corsair power supply, 650 watts, fully modular, for uh, $80 seems like a decent deal to me. Now, you could also go down, like I said, this current build doesn't require much power. So even 550 watts would probably be fine. That's $70. But having more headroom for a bigger GPU upgrade in the future doesn't sound too bad to me. So I think I'm going to slot in this Corsair 650 um, uh, watt power supply for $80 into the build. But like I said, you could spend less, you could spend a lot more, and it can help you with your upgradability of your system to throw some more power in here. Now, the case itself is really gonna be a personal preference thing, both on the looks, and then you wanna make sure it's big enough to fit your, your system. So getting something like a mid-tower case, and if you look at the actual uh, details of the case. It will tell you the largest like s GPU that it can fit, things like that. Um, but something like a Corsair 4000D Airflow is a great, a uh, great case. A Fantex Eclipse P300A Mesh. Um, honestly, right now, if that's coming in at seventy dollars, you could certainly spend less. But I think I'm going to slot this one, this one in. Um, because it's a little bit lower price, and I believe it comes with at least one fan. And this is a low enough power system where I think one case fan with a mesh front, um, for the kind of power draw that we have on these parts, I think this will be more than enough. Now, you could definitely spend less on a case, and you could definitely spend more on a case. Now, we're coming in at $650, and we still have to get storage. So I don't recommend buying a hard drive unless you just need a massive backup storage. You should still buy an SSD to install your operating system and your, uh, your main games and applications that you use on a regular basis. You could save money by going down to 500 gigabytes or even less. Although personally, I think buying a terabyte is a pretty good price to performance. And then uh, there's so many options here. You can look into them. You can look at their speeds, all of that. Um, but I'm seeing right here a Silicon Power A60 for one terabyte coming in only a little over $50. Um, that seems like a pretty good deal for an NVMe um, SSD. One terabyte, like I said, if you want to have a lot of games installed at the same time, you could go up to two terabytes. Um, if you really want to cut corners, you could go down a bit less. But guys, it's only like $50 for a terabyte NVMe drive here. Seems like a pretty good deal to me. Almost any SSD is fast enough for a game drive. Um, and NVMe drives should support uh, the direct storage feature that's coming out in the future. Well, guys, here we are. You could definitely spend less, as I've mentioned. But we're coming in at $700. And this is going to be an extremely solid 1080p gaming PC. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more, what should you do? Well, for one thing, I think going up from 16 gigabytes of RAM to 32 gigabytes of RAM would make me feel a lot more comfortable about that not being an issue any time in the, in the future. You'd probably want to upgrade the whole system before 32 gigabytes of RAM is an issue. Um, so I think that would be a, a great place to make some changes here. Where else would you want to spend the money on the changes? Well, other changes are going to be a lot more expensive if you want them to have a big impact. And right, if you want to target um, better gaming performance, I think upgrading the GPU is going to have the biggest bang for the buck increase to your performance from here. 
after a certain point, GPU upgrades start having diminishing returns, and you would then want to spend more on your CPU. Although, like I said, if you're more esports focused, the CPU and RAM can be more important than towards a more balanced system or especially a single player focused system. Now, we're gonna take out this video card and look at what if you wanted to spend a little bit more. Well, if you wanna go up to a 6600 XT, you're gonna get almost 20% faster performance, but you actually have to jump up to around $290 right now. Let me check the 6650 XT. Oh, that's only about 250 right now. That would be worth it, I think. You're gonna get more than 20, a little bit more than 20% performance uplift in GPU limited situations for that extra little bit over $50. Or if we're comparing it to the non-mail-in rebate version, I think that's worth it, guys. So adding this in is now gonna make you um, have a lot more headroom of, of, of GPU performance at 1080p. And I think that's an excellent value and we're still coming in here well under $800 for the build. This is significantly faster than Nvidia's competitor, which I already showed you of the RTX 3050. Now, um, the 6700 non-X is coming in at about $300 right now, but I'm not sure, I don't think you're gonna get enough extra performance off of that compared to the $250 6650 XT because they're fairly close in performance where I'm not sure this makes the bang for the buck choice right now. Um, although it is better performance and you certainly could make that choice. If we try the 6700 XT, that's coming in at 350 and, and the 6700 XT, is starting to be a pretty reasonable 1440p GPU. Although again, compromises to ray tracing and such compared to Nvidia. But if also this is a really interesting GPU for high refresh rate 1080p gaming with a lot more longevity in it than if you're trying to use it at 1440p as we're starting to get into the next generation of graphics cards. So the 6700 XT, I'm gonna say, this is the one I would, I, um, you could go either 6650 XT if you want higher refresh rate 1080p or some decent 1440p gaming. And then 6700 XT is bumping us up to, we're at $860 now on the overall build. Uh, but this would now open up reasonable 1440p gaming and higher refresh rate uh, 1080p gaming. Now we're getting into the price range of the RTX 3060, which is Nvidia's next option. They have some around this 316, 340. The $316 one is a single fan cooler. Guys, I, I don't know about that one. Getting into at least two fans, you're up around $340. And I've got to say, if I had the choice between a 6700 XT and an RTX 3060, I'm going to take the 6700 XT unless I absolutely require some NVIDIA specific features like for productivity apps where uh, certain professional programs are just programmed to work on NVIDIA and, and you're just kind of locked into their ecosystem. Whereas for gaming, I think the 6700 XT just makes more sense for the performance per dollar compared to the 3060. Now, if we jump up to the next price bracket, NVIDIA's choice is the RTX 3070, which starts coming in at $460. Uh, the 3070 Ti coming in at over $600. And then if you wanna jump into a 3080, you're now up to around $760. Now, if we compare these to the AMD options, it gets really interesting again, because the 6800 XT version right now is available for $515 if you want, um, if you're going to use a pro, I think there's a mail-in rebate for $20. So $535 if you don't count the mail-in rebate. This is a really good price. And the 6800 XT is going to crush a 3070. It's going to beat a 3070 Ti pretty handily other than in ray tracing. And it, it, when you're not ray tracing, it's going to basically match an RTX 3080, but it's doing it for over $200 less than a 3080. So if your price point right now is $1,000, I think this is the build. 
Now we're starting to also kind of hit about the limits on the, um, the power supply here as well, but I think 650 watts, I haven't used this particular 650 watt power supply on a 6800 XT, but I have used a 6800 XT on a 650 watt power supply and it ran just fine. So I think you'll be okay here. And this is, like I said, a thousand dollars. And not only do I think this build is going to crush 1440p, I mean, 1080p, no problem. 1440p, high refresh rate in almost every situation except for ray tracing. And even 4K 60fps with some reduced settings and some upscaling in certain games, this is fine. I used a 6800 XT at 4K 60, and like I said, some image quality compromises, you're not going to just max everything out, but this is fantastic for $1,000. Now, if you want to go past this point in terms of price, you want to spend more money, this is the point where you have to, I think, make a choice where if you're, it might start make, making sense to put more money into the CPU if you want a platform that's going to have better longevity, it can handle further GPU upgrades in the future uh, without having to upgrade the whole system, that kind of a thing. Or you could spend more money to get things like better ray tracing, because I think it's the RTX 3080 where ray tracing at 1440p starts really making sense. So I'm going to throw that in as an option. You, if you want, if you are interested in ray tracing, the RTX 3080 uh, coming in around $750. Now you want to check out if the 12 gigabyte models don't cost much more than the 10 gigabyte models, because a lot of times they come in at almost the same price and the 12 gigabyte version is a few percent faster and has that extra VRAM headroom, which can help and especially going into the future. Um, so you could, you could choose uh, any of these options here. Now I'm going to go ahead and slot in the cheapest one, but feel free to go, go up for um, a, a, a 12 gigabyte model or spend a bit more. But this would get us um, in at $1,270, and you now have NVIDIA if you need that for productivity reasons, or like I said, you wanted ray tracing, things like that. But other than the ray tracing and productivity, this isn't that big of a performance gain over the 6800 XT. So the other place that you could start going up to uh, more for is the CPU and um, getting that extra longevity. And I think it's only now where that starts to actually make sense because past this point on the GPUs, there's not a lot of gain in price to performance and that kind of a thing. If you really want a game at 4K, um, at higher refresh rates, you might look into the 4080 or the 4090, but now your price tag is just blown completely out of the water. So it's not a great value. Um, so CPU wise, at this point, like I said, um, you can go either AMD or Intel on their newer, newer systems. The 7600X would be the uh, cheapest way to get into the new AMD platforms but currently their motherboards are pretty expensive. And um, some of the gaming performance and productivity performance can be a little bit better um, on Intel as well, depending on which CPUs you look at head to head here. So I don't wanna make this whole video on which CPU to get on the, these newer generations. The main advantage to the AMD platform would be it'll be easier to upgrade your CPU in the future. Because if you buy into the Intel platform, you're going to be locked in to this platform. You, uh, newer generations of Intel CPUs won't support it. Something like a 13600K is a very good choice, and so is a 7600X for gaming. However, if you're interested in productivity performance, I think Intel is the way to go. Their extra E cores are going to make a big difference there, and AMD doesn't have that. So I'm going to leave it up to you on what you want to go with here and, and price out those deals because this video is going on 30 minutes now. I just realized that. But hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on where to go for your builds. Like I said, I think slotting more money into the GPU makes the most sense up until you get to the higher end GPUs where going further on the GPUs is just diminishing returns 
that's where going with the newer generation CPUs, I think, makes the most price to performance sense. I hope all of you have an excellent day.